Welcome, welcome everyone to the Deep Dive. Great to have you with us. Today we're plunging into something that gets asked a lot online, especially in, you know, gaming and Linux circles. The big question, can you actually play League of Legends on Linux in, say, 2025? It's a question with, well, quite a history, right? Lots of hope, maybe some frustration mixed in there. We've got a really good source to walk us through it. A video from the YouTube channel XGuy, they promise a full guide, tips, basically, cutting through the noise and uh, let me just say up front the answer we found it might be clearer maybe more well direct than some folks expect okay let's unpack this if you're wondering about leaving linux stick around yeah it's fascinating and x guide really nails this things change so fast with linux gaming compatibility and this isn't some super niche question either you've got the huge appeal of linux that flexibility the open source aspect but then you have league of legends massive game super popular so yeah people really want to know our mission today based on what XGuide laid out, is to clear up any old info, give you the current status, and crucially explain the why behind it. And like you hinted, the short answer. The one XGuide makes super clear right away. It's no, you can't play League of Legends on Linux in 2025. Wow, just the straight no. I bet that hits hard for some people, especially those who remember, I mean, it used to work, right? It wasn't even that long ago. Before a specific patch, uh, Linux users were definitely getting into Summoner's Rift. Our source, XGuide, points out that before patch 14.4, yeah, people were playing, and apparently playing pretty well sometimes, using some clever tools. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Those tools were, like, essential. We're talking about Wine, mostly. Right. And Proton, which Valve developed for Steam, building on Wine. And launchers like Lutris, helping manage it all. Mm. For anyone maybe not familiar, these aren't native Linux games. They're uh, compatibility layers. Really smart software. They basically translate the Windows commands the game is making into something Linux can understand. Oh. Kind of like a real-time interpreter, tricking the game almost. Yeah. And Etsguide mentions, yeah, performance was often surprisingly good. Right. And the cool thing, which the source kind of highlights implicitly, is the community aspect. The Linux community built and tweaked these tools, shared settings. It was all very collaborative, very open source spirit, you know. It's totally. They bridged a huge gap, making these massive Windows-only games playable. It felt like a real win for Linux gaming back then. It really was. A huge sense of accomplishment. Getting a game like League, a huge competitive Windows title running smoothly on Linux, that was big. Yeah. XGuide points out how people would share their exact wine settings, their Proton versions, little tricks. It created this whole ecosystem of shared knowledge. It wasn't just playing. It was like proving Linux could do it. Right. Really showed off what that community dedication could achieve. Okay, so things were looking pretty good. Community's buzzing. Games are running. But then, uh-oh, the source, XGuide, really flags this one moment, a single change that just flipped the table entirely for Linux players. Riot Games introduces their anti-cheat system, Vanguard, into League of Legends. And this wasn't just any old update, was it? This was different. Fundamentally different, yeah. This is the vanguard moment we need to understand. Exactly. And this is where the tech details, which XGuide explains well, become really important. Vanguard works at the kernel level. Okay, kernel level. What does that mean in simple terms? So the kernel. Yeah. Think of it as the absolute core of your operating system. Yeah. Like the engine room. It loads first when you boot up. It controls everything. Hardware, memory, security. The absolute boss. Got it. The deepest level. Precisely. Yeah. So when Vanguard operates there, it's not just watching the game from the outside. It digs deep into the system. It wants fundamental control. Okay, so it's trying to talk directly to that engine room, that core. But XGuide explains why Linux, even with Wine helping out, just doesn't get what Vanguard is saying or needing. That's a great way to put it. It's a fundamental mismatch. Vanguard is built specifically to talk to the Windows kernel. It uses specific Windows tools, uh, APIs, security features found only deep inside Windows. Right. It embeds itself there to watch everything, looking for cheats at the most basic level. Yeah. Very privileged access. When it tries to do that on Linux, well, Linux doesn't have those specific Windows kernel parts. Ah. Even with Wine or Proton doing their translation magic for the game itself, mm -hmm. they can't fake the entire deep level Windows kernel environment that Vanguard demands. So Linux kernel is just built differently. Mm. Different security model, different architecture. Okay. So Vanguard looks around, doesn't see the Windows kernel environment it needs to hook into. Yeah. And basically says, this isn't right. This isn't secure according to my rules. So it's not just a bug. It's Vanguard doing its job, but its job description requires Windows. Exactly. It's a design choice by Riot for security. And that design inherently shuts Linux out. Which makes sense from Riot's perspective, right? They want to stop cheaters, keep the game fair. Kernel-level anti-cheat is powerful for that. But 
X-Guide must touch on the flip side. The Linux users, who suddenly got locked out after all that effort. Oh, definitely. X-Guide captures that frustration. From Riot's view, security is paramount. They need to protect the game's integrity for millions of players. And yeah, kernel level is one of the strongest ways to fight sophisticated cheats right now. Sure. But for the Linux community, it feels like being told, you must use this specific OS to play our game. <laughs> Which kind of goes against the whole Linux philosophy of choice and freedom. Yeah. The source mentions players feeling, well, abandoned. After putting in all that work to make it run, oh. it really highlights that clash. Developer security needs versus user system autonomy. So, okay. Vanguard arrives. It needs the Windows kernel. Linux doesn't have it. What happens like immediately? You're a Linux user. You try to launch leak post Vanguard. Yeah. What does XGuide say happens? Instant failure, pretty much. Just boom. Yeah. XGuide explains it clearly. You launch the game, maybe through Wine or Lutris like you used to, and it'll likely crash right away. Or maybe during the loading screen just before the game starts. It's not like, oh, it runs poorly or glitches. No. Vanguard actively detects it's not on a supported Windows system. And it just shuts the process down. Hard yeah. stop. Wow. It's doing its anti-cheat job, blocking what it sees as an insecure or non-compliant environment. And Linux, even with layers, falls into that category for Vanguard. So no sneaky ways around it, no special settings anymore. None. That's the key takeaway from XGuide. It's very clear on this. No workarounds, no secret scripts, no community patches are going to bypass this reliably. Vanguard's check is fundamental at that kernel level. So the party's over for league on Linux, essentially. That's the reality, yes. The video states unequivocally, there are no longer any reliable workarounds. Riot made a choice for security using a method that, by its design, excludes Linux. It's a trade-off they decided was necessary for the integrity of the game for the vast majority playing on Windows. Okay, so if you're listening and you love League and you love Linux, Okay. what now? What are the actual practical options according to XGuide? It sounds like they're pretty limited. They are. And XGuide lays them out simply. Basically, two paths if you absolutely want to play League. Option one, dual boot. Meaning install Windows alongside Linux on the same computer? Exactly. You choose Windows when you want to play League, boot into Linux for everything else. Okay. Option two? A separate Windows machine. A dedicated computer just for Windows games like League or... Well, just for Windows. Right. No way to run it directly within Linux anymore because Vanguard says no. Correct. No. That kernel level block is the wall. XGuide mentions, you know, dual booting can be a hassle. A separate PC costs money. So neither is perfect for a dedicated Linux user. But they're the only ways now. All right. So let's wrap this up. What this deep dive, really leaning on XGuide's clarity here, tells us is the days of playing League of Legends directly on Linux are, well over, for now at least, that kernel level integration of Vanguard is the definitive reason why. It's uh, probably tough news for Linux gamers who value that freedom and put so much effort in before, really shows how one technical decision driven by security can just change everything for a platform. It really does. Mm -hmm. And if you zoom out a bit, connect this to the bigger picture, this whole League Vanguard Linux situation, mm -hmm. it's a really potent example. It forces us to ask, you know, what trade-offs do we accept for game security? Mm. How much control of our own systems are we okay with giving up, potentially, when developers use these really deep-level anti-cheat tools? Because mm. Vanguard isn't the only one, right? This trend of kernel-level anti-cheat is growing. Yeah, you see it in other games, too. Right. And that inherently creates friction with operating systems like Linux, which are all about openness and user control. So this isn't just about League. It's about this bigger tension between securing online games and maintaining user freedom and OS choice. How does that evolving security landscape impact open source, impact gaming freedom? Definitely something to think about, maybe something for you, the listener, to mull over as you look at the games you play and the systems you use.